Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at onboarding a ATA192 3PCC analog telephony adapter to WebEx calling. The specific PAR number we're using is a ATA192-3PW-K9. So this is the 3PCC version, also known as the MPP multi-platform version of the ATA192. Please be aware the enterprise version of the ATA192, which is for CUCM, Cisco Unified Communication Manager, is not firm or migratable to 3PCC slash MPP. So again, just to repeat that the ATA192 with enterprise firmware is not migratable to MPP firmware. The um, unit itself, uh, before I actually provision WebEx calling, I'm gonna make sure that I've updated the firmware on it just to minimize any issues. And what we're going to do now is we will go actually into WebEx calling and we'll go ahead and under device, we're going to add this as a device. I'm going to add this to an actual workspace because typically this would be a device that you would uh, deploy within a office uh, attached to a fax machine or attached to alarm system or some type of device that needs to use plain old telephone connection, analog phone line. Basically, I'm going to call it back office. We're going to select the actual device, so this is the Cisco 192. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter in the MAC address. I recommend typically taking a picture of the MAC address or web browsing directly into the unit and capturing the MAC address. This does have to be 100% accurate for this to function correctly for the onboarding. Then I'm just going to visually verify. Okay, I notice I have one digit I need to correct here in the MAC address. And just to make sure everything looks good, I'm just going to verify all the digits. Okay, so that looks like it's good. We'll go ahead and click Next. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go in and add an extension to this. So 192.21, so 1921 will be the extension. I'm going to leave the other settings as is. Okay, it says Workspace created successfully. Device successfully added. Excellent. Next, we're going to go ahead and actually um, web into the device itself. I do need to plug an actual PC into the device directly. The device itself has actually a port that is listed as Ethernet. And basically, it works like a router so the ethernet port is like the LAN of the router by the way the uh, unit itself i've defaulted to factory default admin admin is the authentication factory default also take a look at the firmware i'm using it's been updated to 11.2.1 mpp uh, date stamp june 17 2021 so that would be key things make sure the firmware is updated factory default the unit plug in your PC into the Ethernet connection because this does act as a router. The PC will get an IP address with the 192.168.15.x network and the AT192 is going to be the gateway for that. Next we want to go ahead and um, grab the profile rule so that's going to be the CiscoSipFlash.com as you notice there and we're going to simply copy this over to the ATA192 and specifically we're going to replace the existing profile rule. Typically when you default this device or have an existing, if you notice the activate profile rule, we're going to erase that. In this case I'm going to actually uh, type it in. I have actually two different PCs I'm working here because the one PC is on the Ethernet side of the ATA192 and then the PC with internet access is actually on the other side of AT192. No big deal. The URL is fairly basic as you notice and that should be it. I don't think there's any other setting we need so we're going to go ahead and submit it. The process of onboarding an ATA192 does take a number of minutes, typically somewhere between four to eight minutes I found. 
it can't even take longer. This part of it, there won't be any strong indication what the status of the unit itself is. So you basically just have to give it some time. The web interface will stop responding at a point of time. So the piece you currently have connected on the Ethernet side of the AT192, you will notice the actual web interface will no longer respond to that PC, which is normal. So right now we'll actually look at the LED lights on the unit itself. And uh, typically, as I mentioned, four to eight minutes is what I've been seeing, but it can be longer. So we'll just kind of take a look at it for a few minutes here. If you run into any issues with this, there are specific firewall requirements and networking requirements. If you do a search for WebEx calling firewall ports, you will typically find a link to a document that goes over the actual TCP UDP ports that are used in specific domains and also specific public routable IP addresses that need to be whitelisted. So that's one area if you have a very secure environment where only limited accessibility is offered to internet, then you may want to take a look at that document. And as I mentioned earlier, this device by default does act like a mini router. So you notice there was some activity there. Now the um, actual LED is showing red. So typically this is an indication the unit's going through a reboot cycle. As I mentioned earlier, this unit does by default, default act as a router. So the PC, the Ethernet port you'll plug the PC into is as you're plugging it behind a router itself. And that's where you're getting the different RFC 1918 address space. So if you notice the PC was at 192.168.15.x. And that's normal behavior. So you may end up using two PCs to deploy this, one PC on the LAN side of the ATA192, and then another PC on the other side, basically your standard network, if you will, so you can access WebEx calling. Because generally when you're doing the initial deployment of the 192, I found uh, the connectivity, internet connectivity through it from the PC connected to the ethernet side it does not have any uh, internet connectivity. Another way to get around that is if you have Wi-Fi internet connectivity in your environment, you can always you know, have the PC connect to that concurrently as it's connected to this unit during the deployment phase. And as far as configuration types from a networking standpoint, you would want to take a look at the release notes at the time you're viewing this video, whatever firmware is offered to see what the firmware supports as far as different types of possible behaviors of this unit, and also what is supported in WebEx Control Hub for this unit. So by default, as I mentioned earlier, it does act as a mini router. So if you plug anything, on the Ethernet side of this unit, this unit does do natting. If you need to change a behavior, you want to look at both at the current firmware the unit's using in conjunction with what is on WebEx Control Hub. You probably would want to start with WebEx Control Hub because when you register most devices on WebEx Control Hub, Typically, the firmware the device uses is going to be controlled by WebEx Control Hub and also the parameters that are offered for the device. So that will be the first place you want to look at. Okay, so we'll actually refresh WebEx Control Hub because I believe it should have registered by now. Okay, Cisco 192 online. Excellent. So it's showing it's online. And what we want to do next is we want to do a quick test, like a phone call test, to make sure it's operational. So as far as WebEx control up goes, we look A-OK -okay on that side. And then we're going to go and do a quick test call on the ATA192.
Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing. Okay, I uh, shut off one of my mics. There's an effort now to have a loop, audio loop. So everything went great with the actual deployment. And you, as you notice, the provisioning was actually fairly straightforward, no surprises. So just to kind of wrap this up, to deploy ATA192 with WebEx calling, it does need to be the 3PCC version, also known as MPP. The ATA192s for call managers, Cisco Unified Communication Manager with enterprise firmware are not firmware migratable. So please be aware, so the PAR number you need for the ATA192 is shown here. It's the ATA192-3PW dash k9 and hopefully this video helps you with the provisioning of the ata192 with webex calling thank you